What's up, family? I'm Real Mike Rob. Make sure you tuning in to the Three Point Conversion Radio. They got all of it, and they keep it funky. Let's get it. We have a former NFL offensive coordinator slash and wide receiver coach, and also was a running back coach who coached for 31 years. These are the teams... I hope I don't leave anybody out, but these are the teams that he coached. He coached the Falcons, Jets, Oilers, 49ers, Vikings, Cowboys, Packers, Titans, Rams, and the Steelers. None other than Mr. Ray Sherman. How's it going, Coach? I'm doing good. How about yourself? I'm good. I'm good. Coach, yes, glad sir. to have you on, especially – okay, so we know right now in the NFL – we we see how it's going with with minority coaches, black coaches, and in 2011, you had you had got interviewed for the head coaching job for the Chicago, for the um, Chicago Bears. I wish you could right now for the Dallas Cowboys, but uh, it was reported that it was to satisfy the Rooney Rule. Did you feel that that was the case? And if so, did you believe that the Rooney Rule worked as a whole while in existence? Well, uh, first of all, uh, I want to say that um, I was kind of surprised, you know, that I was asked to interview uh, for the job in Dallas because I knew that the job was already going to be Jason Garrett mm. once Wade Phillips is gone. So it was a surprise to me and. And what I did, I called my agent and told him and mentioned to him that I don't feel I should do, you know, interview for the job because I know what's going to take place. And he felt that um, we talked about it and he, we, you know, he felt that we ought to do it because it'd be, you know, good experience and, you know, that type of thing. So when I went into Jerry's office, I had all my information. I had my book together. I presented that to him and on, you know, how I was going to, uh, do things and set the staff and 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 uh, you know just the offense and defense and coaches and those type of things and a lot of other things and so I I knew that um, it was going to be uh, it was just a formality but then after spending probably three and a half to maybe four hours in the meeting with him you know after uh, we discussed everything and then he said <laughs> he said wow you know a lot. And I kind of looked at him and I said, (laughs) Jerry, I've been doing this for a long time. I better know a lot. I better know what I'm doing. And I think that that shocked him because I don't think he really knew, you know, everything that I knew. And Mm -hmm. and I think that happens to a lot of coaches of color. There's a lot of guys that are knowledgeable. And, and, you know, and I'm going to tell you, there's some white coaches that are knowledgeable, too, that I've coached with that are knowledgeable, don't get opportunities. But I knew that was going to happen, and I knew that I wasn't going to stay there long because, of you know, when you hire a guy within the staff and he's the the guy that's going to be the next head coach, uh, I knew that after I interviewed for the job that I wasn't, go- I wasn't going to be there, and I didn't plan on being there after the interview. So I knew it. I knew what I was getting into. Uh, as far as the Rooney Rule, I think that uh, it's been taken advantage of. I think a lot of these teams uh, just use it as a, a tool to say, yeah, I interviewed a, a minority coach, yeah, I did this, but they don't really have plans to hire them. I think it's just a formality they go through just to show that they've done it so they don't get fined by the league. Because I remember back in uh, 2003 uh, when Matt Millen was the president general manager of, you know, Detroit Lions. And he was fined $200,000 because he didn't interview a minority coach when that position mm, came over. So, yeah. So what I'm saying is I think it's just a formality. I don't think it, it's really uh, – I don't think they really care about it. I think it's just a formality. And I, and I really believe when we lost uh, then Mr. Rooney and then we lost Bill Walsh, two of the strongholds who guys who were really imp- uh, implemented this and – really believed in it when we lost them i think it just it is turned into a sham that's my feelings on it 
because I look at a lot of, you know, coaches that are out there, they're qualified coaches, and then it's, it's really, I believe, it's stacked against them because these guys are going to hire their family, they're going to hire their friends, they're going to hire their sons, they're going to, you know, hire guys that, uh, that they know, they feel comfortable with. And it used to be a time when I first came into the league back in uh, 88, uh, you know, you were with veteran coaches, Guys didn't have egos. They listened to what you had to say. We worked together, and we decided, decided on what we want to do, and we went on. And if you had a good idea, you know, they would use it. But, you know, we talked about it, and there was no egos. Everybody had a job to do, and we did it. Nowadays, it's not like that. It's like guys are intimidated. They don't want uh, to hear what you have to say. They say that they do, but they really don't want to hear what you have to say, and they want to do it a certain way, and that's and that's where you, you're, you're stuck. And so uh, a coach, you know, that's in power, he can basically almost sometimes do whatever he wants to do. He can, I mean, you know, you never really heard of guys getting fired during the, you know, assistants getting fired during the season or certain things happening, but it's, it's, it's a smorgasbord now. You know, guys are getting fired because of things that are happening, and it's just you never saw that, you know, when I first came in the league. I don't see that now. I don't see – uh, coaches uh, being able to basically, if you have a new coach, especially a minority coach, he gets hired for a job, he can't bring in his whole staff. He can't bring in the guys that he wants. He has to go by what they want him to do in order to get the job. And to me, I think that's that's not fair for a guy. If you're hiring him to do a job, then let him do his job. Give him time to do the job. I mean, you look at what happened at Arizona, you look at what happened in Denver, guys get a year or two years and then they're fired. You know, then now all of a sudden they don't, you know, they don't get a chance to, uh, you know, maybe get another job. It really, for a black coach, it's very rarely you get a chance to get another job. Whereas a white coach, you know, you're going to get opportunities. You're going to get two, maybe three, sometimes four opportunities to be a head coach to see if you can get it right. It doesn't happen for minority coaches. Right. I think of Adam Gase. Yeah, and then even you know, you know, even to piggyback on that, they're not allowing them to pick who their assistants are in their team, and then they're not successful, and then you blame it on the coach. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. It's, it's you know, you, but you see, I, I I see it now. It's happening in the general managers. There's only like two in the league now. You know, guys that were in the league and you know not in the league anymore. I see it with you know the head coaches. Uh, you know, guys aren't in the league. I mean, you mean to tell me that Eric Bieniemy shouldn't have a job? He came off the same staff that Nagy came off, uh, Doug Peterson came off, and he won a Super Bowl. And, you know, he's called plays and he can't get a job. But other guys get jobs. I mean, you know, and then you hear things, well, he doesn't, you know, this guy doesn't have the look or he doesn't have what we want and this and that. And, and it's it's sad. Like Jim Caldwell. Jim Caldwell still should be coaching. Right. Mm-hmm. There's no reason why Jim Caldwell shouldn't have been the head coach of the Detroit Lions. And and when you look at that, you look at, you know, his team was in the playoffs. He was doing a good job. He was getting ready to turn the thing around. But the general manager, who was from New England, hired his buddy from New England. And, and that's what happens. He wasn't, Jim wasn't his guy. So he's going to bring in his guy. And look what's happening. And that's what the league is going to now. These guys are hiring their buddies, hiring guys that they're comfortable with, instead of hiring guys that can do the job. Absolutely. Now there, there's only um, four minority head coaches. Three are black, and there's two black interim coaches. Now they've developed a seven point mobility plan that gives teams draft picks to reward teams for hiring minority head coaches and front office executives. How do you feel about the plan, and do you think it actually will work? I don't like it. I think. You know, I look at Tony Dungy. Uh, you mean to tell me that he, you have to give up draft picks or get draft picks because you hire Tony Dungy? We want the same opportunity as everybody. We don't want you giving us anything. We we work hard. We want the opportunities that the same guys, other guys get. You know, but that doesn't it doesn't happen because you you're not in that inner circle. You don't know who the GMs are. And then you look at the black GMs that they had at the Giants, at the Houston Texans, and, you know, guys are not GM or Cleveland Browns. You know, they even though they replaced, they have another guy there. But you look at those guys, they're not even GMs anymore. So what, what happened? And then where, where did, this, uh, where did this, this list come from? 
you know, that this guy is capable, but this guy is not. And, and I kind of, I kind of have a pet peeve with the media because what they will do is when they'll talk about the hot candidate, this guy is the hot candidate. I remember Perry Fuel, two, two time Super Bowl champion, defensive corner. He's interviewing for the jobs and then all of a sudden you don't hear about him no more. He's in the league office. I mean, they, they parade you around, they parade you, uh, different teams and they say, Oh yeah, we interviewed a black coach, but I don't think a lot of them are serious. You know, and, I, and I've talked to, you know, friends that I know in the media who are white, and they'll tell you. They said, you know, these owners don't want to hire a black coach. They're not going to be the first uh, priority. It's going to be a white coach first before it's a black coach. And those are the kind of things that you, you're you faced with. And all, guy, all guys want to do is have a chance, have a fair chance to interview to see if they can get the job, you know. And, and not already, the guy already has the job, you know, they is his name is already on the list where this guy has already got the job. He knows in advance a week or two weeks before, you know, they're interviewing all these other people, and this guy is going to get the job that they already know and they're friends with and, you know, they, they've been together before. And it's, it's really not a, it's not a fair process, you know. And, and, and if all you do is have to look at, you look at a lot of these teams, most of these head coaches are on the defensive side of the ball, Okay. You only have, like Anthony Lynn is the only uh, offensive guy right. that's on the mm-hmm. side of the ball as a head coach. And, you know, and, and, and what happens is there's, a, there's some guys out there who on the offensive side of the ball should be head coaches. They shouldn't always have to be a defensive-minded coach. And that's the thing that I, that I see. And, and then you look at how guys are brought up on these different teams. For example, if you have a, a coordinator – the head coach is white, the offensive coordinator is white, quarterback coach is white, the quality control quarterback coach is white. So when then the offensive when the head coach leaves, the offensive coordinator gets the head job, the quarterback coach goes to the offensive coordinator, and the quality uh, quarterback. Offensive <laughs> coordinator coach goes to the quarterback coach. You follow me? And so there's a there's a pattern here. And then, you know, there's some qualified coaches out there, even in college, that, you know, right. do a good job. It should be have an opportunity, but it's not happening. Right. Yeah. And yeah. Just, just to piggyback on that, um, we just want equal, period. You know, I know we're right. talking about football. We we just we, we gonna say this overall throughout the world. We just want equal. That's it. That's it. That's all. Yeah, that's <laughs> you know what? And I was fortunate to be in the league and coach for 43 years, okay? And I coached in the NFL a long time. And the reason why, I can't help what I know. I can't help, you know, what I bring to the table. Okay, because if you can't bring something to the table, trust me, you ain't going to be in the league. You're not going to be for long. Okay, so you got to bring something to the table. You got to be able to communicate with players. You got to be able to work with players. You got to be able to know what buttons to push. You got to be able to see, you know, if a guy's having a bad day, you talk to him and you get it worked out, and then you go on, you know. And that's what I've always believed in. I always believe in working with guys, helping guys, bring something to the table that's going to make them a better player. And I've been blessed uh, to be able to coach some of the best in the league. You know, when I had quarterbacks, I had, you know, I worked with Warren Moon. With We were together in Houston. I was the running back and receiver coach there when we were together. But then uh, I was with him in Minnesota. And I coached him when I was a quarterback coach in Minnesota. I had Warren. And then we had, had Brad Johnson. I've had Randall Cunningham. You know, I've been with some great guys. I've been with Steve Young in San Francisco and Joe Montana. I've been in the Green Bay with Brett Favre. So I've worked with quarterbacks because, of the position I coached when I was a receiver coach, but you work with those guys. And so uh, when people say that uh, this guy is not qualified, that, that's the problem. Mm. It's, okay, so speaking of, you know, the guys that you work with, these offenses, um, like you stated, and these quarterbacks, when you think about the teams of today, the offenses, the schemes of today, and I guess also from a player personnel standpoint, what teams are you a fan of right now when you look at those qualities? I'll tell you what. I love Kansas City Chiefs because I know Andy Reid and Eric Bieniemy. I love what they do. I love how they get the ball to their players, their, their best players in all time, all situations. I like the way they're defense because they're balanced on defense. So I'm in, I'm intrigued by that. 
I think the uh, New Orleans Saints uh, is a is a good team. Their defense is balanced. You know, I know Drew Brees is hurt, so that you know we'll see what's going to happen there. But the New Orleans Saints, I like. I mean, I, I like the Rams. I think the Rams are very balanced on defense, and I think that they're starting to do some good things. They're you know running the ball more and they're mixing in with the pass, and I think they're balanced, but they're very good on defense. I like Green Bay. I've always been uh, a fan of Aaron Rodgers. I think that he is special. And I think if they uh, are stay consistent on defense, they, they can be a dangerous team. And and I like Tampa Bay. I think Tampa has is, is got some weapons. I think that, you know, it's tough. You know, people don't understand when you, you know, when you don't have OTAs, you don't have mini camps, you don't have, all those things to work out and, and find out things. And then you see what Tampa's starting to do because they got some good players. They got very good on defense. Todd Bowles is a hell of a defensive coordinator. I think Tampa is, is a dangerous team. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, that's going to be a good game with them and the Rams on Monday night. But it's I like them. And I think Seattle – I think Seattle offensively is very explosive. I think they struggled on defense, even though they beat Arizona on Thursday night. I think Seattle defensively, if they can clean up some things on defense, they got a shot. Now, um, they always say that defense wins games. Do you feel that still will be the case this year, or do you feel you have to be an explosive offense to win it all this year? I think I look at Kansas City Chiefs. I look at uh, what they did offensively last year. And I think that they are a dangerous team because when you look at them, they got explosive weapons in all their positions, all of them. And when you and you got a great quarterback, and when you have that, it is hard to get a beat on. You take one thing away, then they can go to something else. Because one thing about you can say in the NFL, if you do something well, a defense can take it away, and so therefore you have to go to something else. And I think that Kansas City has a chance to, you know, to be, you know, very explosive because they can run the football and they can throw it. And they got explosive weapons. Mm. Well, Coach, I, I have to ask you this before we let you go. Um, you, you, who, who was your favorite offense that you were a part of as far as coaching? I mean, you run and shoot, Green Bay Packers with Brett Favre. Uh, then you think of um, – the Minnesota Vikings with Un- Uncle uh, Warren. Like, who was your favorite? What was your favorite um, offense that you were a part of? I had I had two of them. I would say the first one when I was with the Forty Niners, uh, very explosive. Ooh. I mean, we we had guys. I mean, you know, when you have you know the Montanas, the Steve Young, you have Jerry Rice, John Taylor. You know, you have you know Brett Jones. You have you know you have a lot of weapons, and you know we're we were really un- unstoppable. You know, the only thing that stopped us is, is, you know, you may get some injuries here and there. And I think the other one uh, um, was Minnesota because when you have the weapons that we have, when you have a Randy Moss, you have Chris Carter, you have Robert Smith, you know, you have those kind of guys. They were unbelievable. And, and the thing about it is when you get guys like that, they love to come to work, they don't complain, they just come to work. That's what you love as a coach. They it don't matter what the weather is, hot, cold, whatever. Those guys never complain. They came to work and they did what they supposed to do. And I would say, you know, San Francisco and uh, Minnesota. All right. Well, there you have it, Coach Mr. Ray Sherman. Um, coach, I, I got just one request. Um, definitely, we got we love to have you back on, but. Um, if I can make some calls, do you mind going to Chicago and taking an offensive coordinator job? <laughs> that, that's I'm a Chicago Bears fan. That's that's why I mentioned them earlier. They were my uh, mind, so yeah, <laughs> help, help. They need some milk. <laughs> I, I tell you what, man. I I don't know. I guess you know when I look at the Bears, I see you know they're they're a good football team, and and I don't know all that's happening up there and and i don't know uh, one thing i learned in pro sports you don't play musical chairs with quarterbacks mm-hmm. you know so i think that uh he was there and then you know and then they made a quarterback change 
And so I just, you know, when you're not on the end, you only can see from the outside, but if you're not on the inside and you don't understand everything that's going on, it's, it's hard to, to say what the, what the issues are. Right. So, I, uh, I'm a, I'm a fan. So I, too. I know we media, we're media, but I'm a fan too, and I, I can tell you what I see. Mm. <laughs> but I, I, really, <laughs> well, I tell you this: maybe I see it, but I don't want to say yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that man, well, that play caller. I'm gonna try to make some calls. <laughs> uh, I, I, I know one of the players. I'm gonna try to make some calls, and I'm gonna yeah. try to see if we can bring, get bring you out of retirement. <laughs> for real. Like, for real. But all right, coach, we thank you, man. We appreciate you, you man. Anytime. All right, thank you. All right.